All right, time for a Diana game. This is going to be a goldish rated game. I'm going to show you like proper pathing choices to make to uh, basically just win with like level six junglers, like more of those like weaker early game, more clear heavy junglers. Uh, so yeah, that's why we picked Diana for that. Pretty much the perfect champion for it. The early game is not that good. Starts to become better at six. She also doesn't have the fastest clear speed initially. So that's why I'm picking her like especially. Uh, this like champions like uh, Hecarim would be this type of champ. Just you want to go for that full clear, but Hecarim obviously is much faster than a full clear. So I kind of want to pick a champion that's just a little bit, a little bit worse with that full clear initially at least. Ooh, this uh, looks like a pretty painful situation. My kid's dead here, and she they used all their summoners. All right then, and that's not ideal. Yeah, I'm just gonna show you how I play this. How I would recommend you to play this, and that's yeah, that's that. Now for Diana, as you saw in the uh, like item section build thingy at the start, I have two mythic options that I run, which translate into also two different rune pages. I'm gonna go for Riftmaker this game because they are very tank, like fairly tanky. Nasus Vi and Blitz with a Silas that can sustain a lot, so definitely not one shotable. If it, enemy team is more one shotable, then I would opt for the. Um, for the rocket belt instead which then also switches my runes over but you will have seen that so yeah the reason i switched the runes by the way is because the sudden impact gives you more burst damage which is good and then also the ravenous hunter is kind of required to give you a bit more sustain even though it did get nerfed it still gives you more sustain whereas like if you go for a setup like this with the runes and you go for a one shot build then you would have no sustain because it does less since you don't have the omni vamp from the rift maker that's the reason for it Either build still takes red smite though. All I'm doing now is just going to go for a full clear as fast as possible. However fast your champion does it. Generally the category of champions that I'm playing right now does this re reasonably quickly. Huh. I'm actually surprised that my bot lane won that fight. Seeing as how my Caitlyn had to literally burn every single summoner they had. So eh, yeah, I'll take it I guess. She needs a ward. You need to. You, I, I'm trying to ping him to ward because he's gonna get ganked soon. Uh, mid lane died. You should really ward here, buddy. Like, use my Q to dash over. Hmm. Okay. I will not be able to contest Pop Scuttle. I don't think I should just recall right after this camp because the mid lane prior difference is way too big, and Aurelia is just gonna recall. She had like a lot of time to ward when the wave was under third, which she should have gone for. But it is what it is. Get this and then the dagger. Got one control ward. Probably gonna hang on to that control ward for a while, but just having one is nice. If you have enough money for a blasting wand, you should probably just buy that. But it's all good. Let me see. If you have like a thousand gold though, you don't want to necessarily buy the full on recurve bow. It's actually better to get the AP from blasting one because you have an attack speed steroid over like in general. Just 20 CS and she went for a top play like that. Interesting. I instantly recall because this allows me to still get bolt scuttle. Uh, and when the vice like clearing towards top, her clear speed isn't that good. So this allows me just to have this play. I'm waiting for the Seraphine also to get back to the wave for me to go for a bolt gank here. Can use the move speed increase from this, and then we're just gonna go for this. Being multiple times that you're going in because sometimes they might not see you, so the engage here is nicely set up. Don't try to max range Q snipe something. Always try to hold on to that for as long as possible. This is gonna be fine. We go in now. Good. That's what we're looking for. Unfortunately, Seraphine did get that kill, but I'm gonna push the wave now. I'm pushing this. What are, you, what are you pinging about? I don't see the problem. I need to push that as fast as possible because this would connect in time for the turret. Embrace the night. I know those pings don't make any sense. This is a nice mute. I'm okay with that. We saw that bot lane completely pushed up. If you see a lane like that pushed up, just go for it. Just send it for a gank. It generally tends to work out pretty well. Let's rotate it mid. Okay. Got the wave into the turret, so it's gonna be fine now. 
I think Seraphine should have just taken the recall because she had quite a lot of gold off of that play, like at least like five, six hundred. Probably could have bought something there instead of just sticking in that way for the entire time. Now, main thing here is I just that, did that full clear, right? Instantly went for Scuttle again. Then I looked for the play right away. And then I'm now just going to look for a clear again. I mean, unless this mid lane play is a thing. It's not really a thing, is it? Yeah, you're just trying to look for the place that, like, especially early game, try to look for the place where your camps are down and not when your camps are up, because that would be incredibly inefficient. And on champions that need to scale a little bit more like Diana, that's going to cost you a lot. So if you look for, like, a play that's off, like, outside of the full clear, it has to be, like, necessary, like the mid lane could have been. If she would have been able to survive just a little bit longer and I would have been able to get in range of the Blitzcrank kill, I think that could have been good, but yeah. Stuff like that is very important because if you try too hard to look for those aggressive plays that just won't work, then you're going to fall very far behind or you're just not going to get far enough to where things would actually be good. I think Blitzcrank kind of just gave up on bot lane and is starting to rotate now for like random plays. Uh, getting CC locked under turret there is pretty bad for the Aurelia though. I'm gonna take that kill. Let me just get on this one. Alright, we're leaving. All good. I'm gonna take the plant here. I saw the play going on with the Aurelia, so I'm just gonna path towards it. I was already planning to path like towards Scuttle here, but might as well rotate for that at that point. My camps are all down, so that's why I'm looking for like, active plays. Again, same thing applies. Aurelia is doing pretty well against Nasus though, definitely. It looks like Blitz is just trying to roam now because of the plays that have been happening on bot lane and I think he's kind of tilted. I think she may already be dead getting hit by that hook. Yeah, that sucks. I can't path that way game, thank you. I just like the path around. Good. Almost at Nashers, which is going to be big. I have to be super careful for a blitz hook here. I could easily die if he hooks me into this range. I just want to get the wave though. This wave is kind of free. I'm actually gonna leave that so it is a little bit more towards my Luxus side. I'm just gonna smite this for the smite active to get it. Vi, Vi right now should be doing this dragon, I think, or going for the bot gank, I guess. Uh, plants up, plants should be up, so I could just go over the wall here. Mm, I have quite a lot of gold. So this doesn't seem like a great move. Oh god, okay. Very nice Seraphine play there. Good ult. We can Dragon here. Right, with, with Vi, by the way, specifically, I want to, like, hold my ult until she, like, charges her, like, starts charging her Q. But she didn't start charging her Q in this situation. She actually just straight up opted to, like, use it, like, as a tap thing. Which is smart, because start, like, charging your Q against the Diana doesn't really do anything for you. So, that's what I was waiting for. And as soon as it, she just tapped it, I was like, okay, I might as well just ult at this point. Because it won't change anything. Like, at that point, there was nothing else to be done about it. It's very good there that the uh, Seraphine had the ult ready to save me. Ooh, that is pretty sketch, though. Getting the shot, that, like, getting... That's not a worth it trade for Aurelia at all. That's very good for Nasus. I have a lot of gold, which is a little bit of an issue. I don't necessarily want to look for a play, but all of my camps are up. So, it's slightly more efficient clearing-wise here is actually just doing my camps and then recalling. Because I'm planning on, like, spending the money anyway. It's better to just take more for now. There's no big objective to contest up currently. So this is fine. I, I don't want to fight this. I have way too much gold for that. That's the downside about this. If you do see like a fight opportunity, you can't really go for it because of the gold. But it's more efficient. Because I'm not like pressured for any objectives right now to just clear my camps. Rotate through them and then afterwards go for the back and then look for like active plays on the map again. I can then instantly like look for a bot, gang, bot lane gank for example. I actually think Irelia threw a big lead in top lane. 
It is not smart that this guy is not rushing steel caps, which is like a big mistake on his end. If he would have been rushing steel caps, it would have been much worse for Aurelia. Because it blocks a lot of her damage output. But getting the shutdown back for Nasus there is pretty huge. If the Vi would now gank it and like Nasus gets just an ult and a slow off, Aurelia could just die easily. I saw Nash's Tooth, and since we're going for a Riftmaker build, I actually have enough gold for the uh, thingy, so... I was saying I'm gonna go for defensive boots here, but since seeing as how I just have enough gold for the Leeching Lair item, get the Omnivamp going, I actually prefer that. Right, my Lux definitely needs to chill. No, this is looking a little sketch. I'm gonna go Bolt here. Next thing I'm buying is definitely tier 2 boots though, and it's gonna be either steel caps or mercs, and I think I'm gonna go for mercs simply because of like wither here, mostly. Eh, eh, debatable. Ooh. Give me this. Thank you. Wait, I see a Jinx. She's just trolling. She has tier 2 boots, so I'm not, I can't catch her. It's not, it's not, that's not happening. Uh, she's kinda low. Yeah. If I had boots there, I probably could have gone for the kill shot. But the Leeching Lear does make me much stronger. Like in actual fights, so I actually still prefer it. Checking the bolt side right now to see if there's anything I can take. But it seems all to be down. I could just wait for the Jinx to get back to the wave here. Or back to lane. Oh, okay. She killed him. That's good. She still has the lead. This Nasus is still... Oh, that's why he didn't buy boots, because he has the uh, boots rune. That's a big mistake on his end. Like, steel caps against Aurelia are very, very good. It's gonna go for the E. No reason to try to snipe with Q. I just was waiting for the Jinx to get back there. Almost like... I knew the Blitzcrank wasn't probably gonna rotate for that, so... Or go bot lane for this, so we just go for the Jinx there. Really, I got killed. I'm good. Let me check these bolt side camps real quick. I'm gonna go for Raptors. This Silas is pretty fat, but that's mostly because Lux is just like... She is getting o ganked over and over by Blitzcrank, but she's not respecting it, which is essentially just the problem. Because if she was just like standing under a turret and playing it much safer, that would have just been better for her. Better for her. I'm not gonna go for mid, I'm just gonna take the red and take the Krugs here, and just, like, deny the Vi as much as possible, essentially. This is all good. I can also probably kill the Jinx in a second here. I'm not gonna use my Smite, because I'd rather have it for, like, a potential fight that would break out here. Jinx might run the mid lane from this position, so I'll wait here for a second. She could be going for Krugs here, she's not... She's gonna show on the wave? Or is she just gonna back? Okay, she knows I'm here. Trying to see if she would walk into the queue there. Going for a fight on mid. I didn't get that one. That is sad. I'm just gonna push Bolt in one more time here. Since they're all mid, I might as well take the wave I'm, since I'm here. And we'll have a dragon coming up in 25. I can get the scuttle into the blue, into the dragon here, which should be good. Good flash queue from Vi there to get the kill. Wait. I say get the kill, but she actually didn't get the kill. I have another smite, so I can just do this. Run mid here. I'm gonna run mid here to cut off the bot side escape. Interesting. Alright, I guess I got the XP. I really had the same idea. If I just committed, it's committed too hard to the play, which is fine. Like, actually going for Kate and trying to go for the kill shoulder is probably your best move, because she had no way out. So this is all good. As you can see very much here, like, I have a lot of, like, consistent farm by just consistently clearing, uh, looking for openings to actually get those camps down and stuff like that, looking for those rotations. I had good impact, but not as much. Like, I didn't have to do as much because my top laner kind of just won his lane, which is good. Just had some bolt ganks, and mid lane is literally impossible because my Lux keeps dying, so there's really no way to look for anything there. Going, still going very aggressive. I'm not rotating mid here because there's nothing to, like I can basically just AFK siege that, sure, but that's about all I can do in this situation. Whereas if I keep rotating for now, I can get my Rift Maker into like a couple of boots or like uh, the pair of boots, like the normal boots, and then I will have just way more power. There's no other objective to play for right now. Rift World's down, the uh, Dragon's down, 
So it's kind of useless to just siege mid lane AFK. If you would do that on like a clearing jungler, you will essentially lose out on your scaling. Or like heavy scaling, which would just not be good for you. Just rotating through my camps, making sure to like deny Vi her camps. Take another bolt wave if it's open when I'm already there. Stuff like that's very important. I'm just gonna take the back now. This is all good. This will be like very, very good for me in the long run. Get this. Um, yeah, I will definitely be going for mercs. So getting the slow reduction here and also like the magic resist just straight up against Silas should be fine. Getting the, like the silence slow, whatever link tenacity boost is just going to be nice here. They're not doing too many auto attacks on me, so I'm not too worried about that. I'll just rotate towards the bolt here, try to kill the Silas. Should be okay. I'm a level up on him, so. Also, Aurelia's rotating as well. I'm just going to use the Q on the minion to dash to close all a bunch of distance. I need to respect Diana ultimate in a second here. She's not gonna Aurelia ult, is she? Interesting. Alright then. Uh, oh, it was, it, actually, it, I think it was down. All good. I was waiting for her to open that, because I can't really open that with put it, like without putting my E on cooldown instantly, which kind of makes that fight a little bit more awkward than I would like it to be. We should really respect that ultimate for now. I am here to see if they take the engage, but I really want to respect my ultimate. My okay. I will follow that up then. I just wanted to respect my own ultimate. It was going to time out very soon, so that's why I didn't initially just full on commit to that. We could have played that much slower, essentially, is what I'm saying. This is really bad for them. If I can just get my combo off. Jesus Christ. That was kind of close. I didn't get it off. Okay, good. I'll just walk back this way. Holy, that CC lock. Oh my god, that was close. <laughs> that was real close. But yeah, that, that right there. I mean, honestly, that was all Rift Maker. Like, a little bit of extra sustain I just got from that was really helpful. Also, Revitalize really helped there as well with the increased shield and everything. It's just a very, like, close clutch thing to happen there. But that's why I need Mercs, though. Like, that CC lock, I could have prevented, like, a little bit of that. Not really Vice, you see, but more so, like, Blitzcrank's, like, ult silence. I'm gonna take red. I don't know my ult right now, and I don't know where Silas is. Ah, wait, this is where it explains a decent amount there. She needs to be careful. We have a dragon coming up in 50 seconds. I'm just gonna do Gromp and then back. Oh, wait, never mind. You have teleport. It's all good. It's all good then. Let me get this, and then we'll build for Zonias. Get this. I'll get control wards. I have the stopwatch for now, which allows me a free use of Zonias, and then I can instantly use Zonias after. Zonias is an absolute gold tier item for uh, Diana, because it literally just allows you to dive in with ult for free, and get a nice ult playoff without getting punished for it. Like That's like the best thing that you can ever ask for, really. It's just a free play. Uh, since Lux isn't going for the mid wave, I guess I'll take it. Yeah. Because it's quite a decent wave. The only thing I don't like about this is that the... I mean, I guess they're all top lanes, so they kind of just went for that. Lux and Seraphine are trying to zone here or something. I'm definitely playing for Drake, though. Objectives, like, trump any, anything right now, especially like a Drake soul point. This is warded. I see. Who is this? That's Silas. Oh, and Nasus. Can I get my stopwatch off, please? Thank you. Nice. Good. Very, very solid. Right there, that ult landed on three people because they just full commit do dove on me, which is very good. Enemy 
I'm not gonna have my E for this, I'll just Baron instead. I'm just gonna tell that I have no smite, it shouldn't matter, but at least I know I won't have smite for that. I'll control ward. I guess I should control ward a bit because no one else has a control ward. But yeah, my pathing here basically allowed me to be the same level as my top laner. My mid laner is level 9. He has 58 farm, Jesus Christ. Interesting. Please, please, please. Please, give me that. Actually, give me that. Interesting. Okay, took it. Satch. Red buff is extremely good on Diana. Because it allows you to just lock people down even easier and just see, like, overall, like, uh, stick to them much better. Which, sticking to them is very, very key. Please don't take my blue. That's the only thing I ask for. Like, losing red's not too bad, I suppose. But losing blue is a lot more annoying. Please don't tell me I can't kind of take my blue. Please. Why are, why are these AD carries so cringe, man? Actually insane. Like, I understand taking red as an AD carry is a thing, right? Like, I get I get that much, but taking the blue as an AD carry that literally doesn't need her mana anyway, really? That's just grief, honestly. Ah, uh, whatever. It's low elo. These people are petty as hell. I mean, yeah. Not saying that high elo players aren't petty. But, yeah, whatever. Since they're all bold, I'm just gonna push mid with Aurelia pushing top, so we actually pressure everything in. They should be pretty good here because they have a lot of range between them. So this should work out reasonably well. I'm not gonna catch the wave properly though. Come on. One Q kills it, and then we move, move, push on the next wave. This puts the most pressure on them because they have to make a decision at this point, and me and Aurelia both are literally unkillable. So they'd have to go and dive that bot lane play. And if bot lane would just be able to play it safe enough without dying, which it doesn't appear to be the case, we could have just pushed that in the entire base down. They had enough range to potentially play that safe enough, but oh well. They don't win this. That's a good flash. I actually think I have to flash that, because if I get hit by the silence thing there... I don't have too much mana left there. If she didn't flash my ult, I wouldn't have had to flash out, because I don't would have been able to win the play. But the Jinx was basically an unreachable state for me right there. Because she flashed, essentially. I have to respect the fact that I have no mana here, because I don't have blue. I can't do this. I'm literally out of mana. Anything she commits to right now is just on her. If she wins it, fine, but I can't help that. I have no way into that play. I don't have the mana to make that play. She wins it, okay. I mean, I kind of was expecting her to win it because Aurelia is also fed. But, yeah. I would have been able to assist her if the Kate wouldn't have taken my blue, essentially. I would have also been able to, like, not having to flash out in that last play here because I would have had more mana. It's just like a little bit, little thing like that, really. Mid laner is having a hard time this game. Look kind of bad for him. I barely have enough mana to go for this play. But that's gonna be definitely the last play I make. Ooh, he got hooked onto the fountain. I think it's game anyway. All right, but that's it for Diana. As you can see, like that consistent pathing and everything. This is basically how you want to play this. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button below. It helps me out quite a bit. If you'd like to see more videos from me in the future, hit the subscribe button as well. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.